here is the uh, split rail fence around the perimeter of my home. Of course, there was a section that used to run from this one post over here onto this post over here uh, with something in the middle, but the, the growth here kind of interfered with all of that, and I took a post out. And as a result, have had some split rails actually just on the ground, and it freshly snowed last night, so uh, bear with me on that. But I had always just kind of looked at these boards as potentials more for like arrow shafts. You know, if you get into the uh, center of this, you know, a true cedar, it's not going to rot. And I want to say, I know at least uh, these rails are 20 years old. That's how long I've been in the home. And they were here before me. So this is going to be an interesting addition to this particular bow because I am going to try and eat into the center of this and use it as the core wood on my hill style tri lamb. Welcome back to the shop this week. We are going to start our next build, and uh, that build is going to be a Howard Hill style longbow uh, tri lamb construction. One that has been kind of uh, on my list, but never really filtered to the top of my list until recently when I spent a lot of time just kind of contemplating how this bow could turn out and the different uh, design aspects that became really quite attractive to me over time uh, as I was thinking about it. So. As I mentioned, it's going to be a tri lamb bow, and I decided that I want to use bamboo as the back and the belly because I've grown very accustomed to that style of build, and I really enjoy the outcome on that, uh, that makeup. But what I've really been struggling with is what to use as a core lamination, and I have come up with some, some very basic criteria that I wanted to accomplish, and that is one, it needed to be a very compression resistant wood because I've, I've had some troubles with uh, tri lambs in the past, uh, taking a little more set than I, I want to see uh, in the end. So trying to avoid some set, I want something that's going to be very compression uh, good, you know, just good quality compression wood. So uh, that really narrowed the list on some of those woods in addition to being very light weight. So I want this bow to be very light weight in the hand, um, which eliminates a lot of wood. So uh, that kind of left me with a few options that I have on hand, some being cherry, uh, another being hackberry. Uh, and then it crossed my mind to use some cedar. Now, I have used cedar fence rail in the past to make uh, English longbows. And as, long, as a matter of fact, I have a build along if you're interested in checking that out. I'll put the card right here for that video, or it's a, actually a playlist of videos. But um, cedar is incredibly light and very, very uh, compression resistant uh, for a bow wood. Um, the drawback with cedar is that it is very soft and it can ding up and get damaged very quickly. But in this particular build where it's between two layers of, of bamboo, the likelihood of ex experiencing any major uh, damaging effects on cedar is going to be almost nullified. So that is what I have chosen is cedar. Uh, this episode is going to be uh, uh, really kind of um, a little different. So guys, I'm going to show you how I got this piece and I, I was encouraged or I guess not necessarily encouraged and inspired by a video I watched this morning. Uh, Kramer Ammons put one out uh, yesterday or something with an old piece of Osage that he used. Uh, this particular piece of cedar came from an old cedar rail. So this is the same cedar rail that I would use to build some of those English longbows, but this particular rail has been on the ground for about 20 plus years. So... 
This is where I got that piece of wood from. And today I'm gonna to show you how I extracted it. Stick with me. This is just the start of a great bow. All right guys, there were a couple of these pieces over there and the one I put out had a lot of knots in it, but this is, this is the straightest grain piece uh, that was over there on the side yard. Uh, We'll see, uh, we'll see if there's any uh, usable core to this thing. All right, guys, I think this is actually really kind of cool. Um, you can see the, the rot and stuff in the end of this piece of cedar. It has been the uh, rail of my fence for some time. Uh, hopefully there's enough on this inside to ex extract a lamb as a, as a core lamb for this bow. You can see that the weathering kind of got into this check right here, but the, the wood is sound. Right, guys, I wanted to give you an idea of how this worked. Um, I have a very long straight piece of plywood here and what I've done is nailed nailed in from the underside to my board and then ran it through the table saw and what that does is gives me a good straight edge cut on my cedar here and so what I've done is I've allowed myself to get what I what I really want is a biased ring piece to go in as that middle lamb. Uh, so there's there's that cut, and you can just see how gnarly the exterior is here in comparison to what's inside. And so, so through the process of reduction, I have managed to get uh, you know just a kind of lumber-esque piece of uh, this cedar rail extracted. Uh, still some rot present in the finished piece. It's even wet still. Uh, if you could see, and I'm not sure that the camera is gonna be good enough here. Kind of see if I can show you. Where I've got sapwood and heartwood going on right here. Uh, and I, I talked about trying to get a bias string piece out of this. I think I'm going to abandon that thought because I don't want the, it, it looks to me like it's the heartwood where we have some of our rot issues or the sapwood rather, and that the heartwood is pretty clean. And so what I'm going to do is extract our piece out of the heartwood here. Uh, and I've got just enough. I'm going to flip it in for end here. You can see where I've still got some of that rot on that heartwood, or not heartwood, but the uh, um, sapwood side of things. But I should be able to extract a uh, piece out of the heartwood side here. Even so we're going to need to have a rather thick, a thick lamb in here uh, in order to get any kind of strength out of out of the uh, piece, which is not going to offer a lot of strength to the bow itself. That's going to come from the bamboo. But what it's going to do is put a very light, very springy core into this build. And that's what I'm looking for uh, in choosing cedar. We're going to take this as our core lamb. We'll lay out the uh, dimensions of the bow on here, uh, trim it down and uh, put the tapers in on this one. And that will be the uh, start of this particular bow. So um, actually looking forward to uh, getting the build underway. Um, and as I mentioned, I chose the parts for uh, some pretty specific reasons. Uh, the 
Cedar, of course, is going to be a very lightweight and springy wood, uh, very compression uh, resistant material. So uh, this is going to be our lightweight core uh, to which we affix the bamboo. Now I'm going to do some pretty thin layers of bamboo and, and that means I'm gonna be relying actually quite a bit on the cedar to give us the, the rigidity of this particular bow, which is why it's relatively thick um, uh, from front to back. But that is, uh, that's the intent here is to make a very, very light, physically light uh, hunting weight or hunting class draw weight Howard Hill longbow. All right, before we get going, guys, let's go over a few dimensions of uh, what this bow will be. So I'm laying out the shape on the piece of cedar here. The length of this bow is 70 inches tip to tip. So we're gonna make a 68 inch bow to start with. Um, the thickness on this piece of cedar is 3 eighths of an inch thick. We're gonna taper it down pretty significantly down to about um, 3 sixteenths or 1 eighth of an inch out at the tips here. I have laid it out such that the top limb is gonna be one inch longer than the bottom limb. And the width is one and a quarter inches wide. So what I've done here is I've kind of built in some safety on this particular bow. It's, it is what I believe to be a little on the overbuilt side. So once I get the bamboo on here, I think it's going to come out heavier than a 50 pound bow. And so what that allows us the opportunity to do is then narrow these limbs from one and a quarter down to maybe one and an eighth or to one inch. Um, I'm hoping to get one inch, but I've gone wide just in case I end up light on my parts. Um, and then it's 70 inches tip to tip, which will yield a 68 inch bow. Again, if we end up light, we can take an inch off of each tip and make it then a 66 inch knock to knock bow uh, and gain back some draw weight. So when we're dealing with a straight limbed design like a Howard Hill design, when you take, when you start taking length off, you do gain back quite a bit of draw weight uh, in the five pounds range. Uh, but that has built in a lot of opportunity for me to massage this after the glue up uh, to hit that 50 pounds, uh, 50, 55 pound draw weight class when um, you can't do major belly tillering on the bamboo. of the tapering is complete so here's the uh, finished product here you can see it bends pretty well and that's the important thing I'm trying to get some good tiller on that in advance so you can see that the, the taper comes to a pretty narrow or thin tip well, we're still pretty thick here at the grip. So. Okay, I've got this thing all sand it down and the arc on it's looking really pretty good for a straight limbed bow. <clears throat> the uh, thickness here at where the grip will be is about a 0.17 inches. So even just a little bit thinner than I typically go, which is about a 0.18, uh, but not significantly. So we'll get this guy uh, wrapped up and then start on what will be the belly lambs. Now we're going to do two separate lambs because 
uh, they're going to ride up the ramps of the uh, riser piece. Uh, so this is going to be a, a tri bow, but there's going to be a singular back, a singular core, and then two separate belly pieces associated with this build. Um, we're going to work this one similar to the way we did this one, and then we'll just cut out the section where uh, we need to so that we can uh, lay it up on the, the bow itself. Here is the belly lamb that will eventually be cut into two pieces. And you can see that the tiller on it is, of course, off and not anywhere near correct. But that's okay for the time being. We're going to go ahead and temper this piece of bamboo at this point uh, because it's going to have to be ground down uh, a little bit more after the tempering process. So no sense in spending a lot of time getting the tiller exactly right. Uh, just wanted to get it thinned down enough that I could get a good... Uh, through and through heat treatment on this uh, on this particular piece. So. It should be real evident which half of this bamboo has been tempered and which half has not. You can see that it's kind of milky over here and then you know just kind of like what you would see on a white wood bow if you were to heat treat it uh, over coals or what have you. So here you go. This is uh, the heat treatment process. Now I have I have tempered it all the way through to the surface of the back here, or the belly, I guess, the surface of what would be the belly. Um, I sometimes only temper just the glue surface and not all the way through so that I can uh, retain a little bit of ability to do some uh, tillering, heat tillering on uh, the raw, what would be left of the raw bamboo there on the extreme belly edge. And that is no longer my process. I go ahead and heat this all the way through. Um, if we're gonna do any tillering, we'll go ahead and do it through wood removal. Um, so that is, that is my process now, but we have, or I have, tempered this half of the bamboo. I'm going to go ahead and temper the remaining uh, portions here, and then re-grind them down, re-tiller everything, and then separate it into the two halves for the belly piece. Here are all of our parts laid out, guys. It's a, uh, still in its simplistic form, of course. Uh, we have yet to put together the um, riser, which is going to be paduk, uh, sandwiched in this mimosa wood. I think it's going to be quite an attractive, uh, setup, uh, but that will be something that we put together next week. Uh, and once that is put together, we'll then be able to, uh, cut the belly lamb of bamboo in half and sort out the ramps and the glue up and what it's going to take to get that all put together uh, seamlessly. Uh, the piece of cedar wood core here, um, all ready to go. Tillered out, tapered out, tillered the way I want it, or tapered to the tiller that I'm looking for. And then, of course, our backing strip right here, uh, which has been tapered down and tillered and ready to uh, glue onto the back of this bow. Uh, guys, this is, uh, this is where it all starts to happen. Um, and of course we'll be taking on all of those, those, uh, tasks next week. So we'll put the riser together. We'll separate the belly pieces. We'll get everything put together, glued up and be ready to tiller guys. Thanks for joining me this week. Uh, be sure to catch me next week.